questions. What you got for us? <laughs> All right. So uh, we're going to do Super Metroid 100% co-op. Uh, I am Shiny Zenny. This is Zost. Uh, back here we have Kip and Chabo. And uh, yeah, they're going to be doing most of the talking. We're going to be doing most of the running. Uh, Wait, this is not 100%. It's uh, any percent any, all Any items. percent all items. My right. bad. My bad. <laughs> um, or uh, many percent, many as, percent, as some people would call it. Um, but yeah, I, I think we're ready to go. If we can uh, get a, a countdown. Yep. You want to count it off? Yeah. How about uh, the crowd help me out? Five, four, oh, three, three, two, two one, one, go. go. <laughs> All right, you beat me. I win. I'm going to, I don't have to go check on the scientists here, but I'm going to, everybody just runs right past them and doesn't check on them. And I'm going to wake them up and tell them they spilled their cranberry juice. <laughs> so uh, when Zinni comes back, they'll be out of the way for you. Thank you. All right. You're welcome. Chip, you want to explain what uh, co-op is all about? Yeah, so sure. Uh, right off the bat, y'all just want to say we're really happy to showcase uh, Super Metroid again here. Uh, Super Metroid is a game that really stands the test of time. Not only is it a great speed game, but really ahead of its time for the SNES era. Great casual game. If you've never played it, you definitely need to check it out. But we're uh, going to be doing 100% uh, item collection for co-op here. And uh, co-op is a really cool uh, mode where uh, they're both going to be running uh, sort of in the same sort of game state. And so not only will they be picking up items to eventually get to 100%, but they will be sharing energy. They'll be sharing ammunition. So anytime one of them takes damage, the other player will as well. Anytime they pick up an item or, uh, you know, some ammunition or, or energy, the other player will get that as well. So there's actually some really cool tech in this. And... Um, sort of management of your resources along the way. You really have to be cognizant of where you are and where your opponent, or excuse me, where your, your co-op <laughs> friend is. I guess you aren't racing in this one. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, Chaba, tell us a little bit more about mm -hmm. how co-op works. Yeah, so they also share a lot of game state. So as soon as Zenny started the series of state sequence, then Zost was able to activate the elevator to head straight to Zebes. And he's able to just run down there and he's running towards Morph. Uh, as soon as he grabs Morph, then Zenny will be able to head towards Bomb Terizo. Uh, as soon as Zos picks up missiles, then Zenny will be able to enter Bomb Terizo's room and so on. Those, a few early items here, uh, they'll be gated, uh, but most of the time throughout the run, they'll just be collecting items at will and won't have to wait for each other. Right. In fact, early on, you'll kind of get to see a little bit of the nuance here. Um, as you can see, Zenny's just sort of waiting for Zos to collect the Morph Ball. Sometimes that connection will happen instantaneously. Let's take a look. Okay. Orb. 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 We just got it. He got it fairly quickly. Sometimes it waits until the end of the fanfare. So depending on when you get an item at the very beginning or a little bit later, uh, it can eat up a little bit of time, but not a huge deal. So the next time that there's going to be some hard gating here is uh, for this missile pack for Zenny to grab the bombs. After this missile, it's going to... Our, our routes are going to be uh, wide open, and we, are, we, won't, we won't be waiting on each other, pretty much. Now, we'll say back on series, uh, you may have seen Zenny do a new technique for arm pumping. So, you know, we've, we've explained arm pumping at just about every GDQ. Every time Samus' arm position moves uh, while she's running, it pushes her an extra pixel forward, and that helps us run faster over the course of the run. Uh, but Zodin, a uh, runner, recently found a uh, technique that allows us to arm pump much faster, but, uh, you know, you rub your fingernails along the uh, R button, but, you know, it, it can be tricky and you only want to do it in certain rooms. Uh, but even though that can sometimes allow for 30 hertz arm pumping, which is as fast as you can go, that still doesn't allow for Bomb Terizo to be skipped. Uh, Dr. Girlfriend, <laughs> another runner in the community, recently published an excellent, very in-depth video talking about why you will still never see a BT skip done RTA. 
So we just saw another kind of nice, interesting wrinkle for co-op that you wouldn't see in like a traditional solo run. Zenny actually jumped over that E-tank in the Terminator room. Uh, Zost is actually going to grab it on his way through that room. Uh, and they're going to go through the same several rooms here at the very beginning. And then when they finally get to Red Tower, they're going to start to diverge. Uh, Zost will be heading up to Rex ship to handle uh, Fantoon and eventually get to the gravity suit. Uh, Zenny will be going down. But as you can see, Zost is now grabbing this energy tank. It's a good time for uh, both of them to get a refill. So there's a lot of really cool nuance in terms of figuring out who's going to pick up what and at what time. Uh, and the 100% is going to run somewhat similarly to the solo 100%. They're going to skip some of the stuff in Green Brinstar here. Uh, and then Zos will come back for, for the rest of it uh, a little bit more down the line. Yeah, it's kind of interesting also that like Zenny's early game is going to be fairly similar to standard 100% with a few exceptions. But Zos' early game is actually going to be fairly similar to the any percent new route because he's going to go up to Fantoon. Another thing we haven't mentioned yet is not only do the players share uh, ammo and energy, but also the doors. So for example, you know, a blue door in this game will be opened by just a regular beam shot, but a green door requires a super missile. So here in a minute, you'll notice that Zost will, at the bottom of this room, big pink, uh, he'll open a green door and have to fire a super at it. When Zenny finally gets to that room later, that door will have already been opened and will be blue. So they actually, in some ways, have to make some adjustments to ha from how they would typically play in a solo run because they still need to re uh, conserve some of their ammo. It is also interesting that this early game, we get to see some of the differences in how these runners handle their game and the different strats that they use. So a few rooms ago, uh, Zost used a Moonfall to get through Big Pink, and then Zenny coming up in a second is going to be going in morph, and he's going to attempt to weave through these platforms. Andy got weave. it. Very nice. <laughs> And the, the Moonfall, uh, the Weave is slightly faster than the Moonfall, but uh, less consistent. So, yeah, <laughs> that is correct. <laughs> so here we are, here's that. Uh, Zinni even wanted to select supers there for just a second <laughs> because of the muscle memory of uh, thousands of runs, but as you can see, the door was blue. And this uh, door here at the new bridge will also be uh, blue as well. In the meantime, Zost has headed up Red Tower. Uh, he's grabbed the first Alpha Power Bomb pack and the missile behind here. Here's kind of an interesting wrinkle. Uh, a lot of times, like in the the solo run, you would just go ahead and grab the beta out, or excuse me, the beta power bombs in this room up here on the left. Uh, he's actually going to save that, and I believe it's going to end up being the very final item that they pick up in the run at the very very tail end. So Zost is coming up on every Super Metroid runner's favorite room, oh. uh, the moat room. <laughs> So Especially this, during a, a, a one-off kind of racer <laughs> uh, run, yeah. <laughs> exactly. But uh, so here in just a second, this is kind of the first uh, sort of critical moment uh, where it, it's easy to get stuck. So let's see how he handles it. All right, setting up for a horizontal bomb jump over the water here. There we go. Nicely done. Good job. Thank Always you. a sigh of relief when you get over the moat. In the meantime, you'll notice that Zinni went down Red Tower. He is heading to uh, Crade. So heading into Crade's lair here. Uh, take a look at their uh, ammunition right now. You'll notice that they only have one power bomb currently and three supers. But they're both needing to use supers for what they're about to do. So um, they're, they're sort of timing things to make sure that they have what they need in the right amount of time. Here in a minute, Zinni will come across Mini Crate, which will hopefully drop four supers on the run end. There is a tiny, small chance of only dropping three. One quick note that I think is interesting is when Zinni picked up Spacer, it changed the palette that's used for the beam. So Zost had, uh, you know, he's fired a Spacer shot, but it only had it used the palette of the normal charge beam. So it only seems to update the palette when, when you go through the doors. All right, they're both fighting a boss at the same time. We're lo looking for a quick kill from Zinni, and uh, let's see what Zost does here with the fan tune patterns.
Didn't quite have enough supers there, not a big deal. Zinni will just clean this right up. Looks like we got a slow for Zos on the first round. And now we're gonna pick up this various suit. And as you can see, Zos, uh, Samus has already turned orange. Fantoon not playing very nice, giving us some pretty bad patterns here. Hopefully we'll end with a mid, very nice. All right, nicely done. So at this point, Zost is going to start to basically full clear uh, wreck ship. This is kind of an interesting way to clear wreck ship though, because in normal 100% item collection, if you're doing it solo, you would have a, a very different loadout when you're in wreck ship. So this is a kind of a sort of more nuanced way of getting through some of these rooms. Uh, even though he's gonna go in the same order, the strats are gonna be potentially slightly different. Yeah, there are some unique strats in this wreck ship, which I find fun to do. Yeah, normal run, you have high jump boots, you have speed booster, and so your movement is significantly different. One also really cool thing about co-op, just in case anybody hasn't quite noticed because they've been looking at the player's gameplay, here in the middle on the stream, you can actually see the entire map of the game, and you can see Zost and Zenny's uh, characters moving around and, and grabbing everything, which is something that's really cool. All right, that high jump pickup helps Zos get into or uh, through the sponge bath room there. Yeah, that high jump comes just in time. It's, it's really cool how we get some items just right in time. Works out very well. It's kind of the beauty, part of the beauty of this run, I would say. Yeah. And, and then one nuance is that sometimes you'll have different equipment from one run to the next, so you may have to adjust on the fly. Nice bomb jump by Zos there <laughs> to get that energy tank. Shout out to 2Cat. Zinni in the meantime grabbing this Cathedral missile pack, and uh, we'll start to collect several things in Upper Norfair. He will not be full clearing Upper Norfair at the moment. Uh, very similarly to the uh, normal 100% route for a solo run, there are several items up here that will be picked up uh, later after Lower Norfair is completed. And in fact, I believe Zost is going to end up coming and picking up some of these items. But we are headed towards, I would argue, the most fun item in the game. I guess, depending on your preference, some people might say Spring Ball, but I feel like Speed Booster is sort of the quintessential item for Super Metroid speedrunning. It allows for a lot of really interesting tech, and uh, it's a lot of fun to use. So uh, Zenny's on his way down here to grab that Speed Booster. Yeah, more Zodin pumping. You can see the technique being used by Zenny right now. Zost must kill all of the uh, enemies in this room to be able to open that door on the left and then also on the right. There's one item over here, uh, everybody's favorite room in Hondo. <laughs> I call this the worst room in the game. <laughs> <laughs> and we got that speed booster. Zost's gonna try to clip through some of these robots, very nice. And you're gonna notice Zenny moving a lot faster now. Hopefully I will be too. <laughs> Top speed about nine pixels per frame, I believe, instead of five. Nice ad exhaust. Thank you. Zinni will be heading down here to grab the wave beam. Those, those sky missiles, I love that strat. Because if you jump straight across, then you're just gonna bonk into those rocks. So you have to sort of arrest your sideways momentum while still keeping your vertical momentum. Yeah. 
Kip, when are we getting the recruitment speech? <laughs> I, I, I guess since you're, you requested it, maybe now would be a good time. Yeah. Mm. So we did want to take a, a, just a moment real quick to acknowledge um, the entire Super Metroid uh, speedrunning community. Um, we have, without exaggeration, a very, very wonderful community filled with a lot of very friendly folks, uh, very uh, welcoming to new players. So if you are really interested in Super Metroid, whether like legitimately speedrunning yourself, or there's other things to get into. There are people that like to do tasses. Uh, there, there's a pretty robust randomizer community. There's a lot of races and tournaments. And uh, it would be difficult for us to name every single person that played some kind of role in leading to what you're seeing on screen right now. There's all kinds of people that do strat, uh, finding, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, if you wanted to credit everybody that did a strategy right. run, it would be hundreds of people probably. Exactly, and so we have a very, it's, it's a very com a big community effort, and just to kind of make it personal real quick, the very first Super Metroid run I ever saw was the 2016 SGDQ uh, Super Metroid race, and it inspired me just to play the game again casually for the first time in a long time. And then all of a sudden, people started coming to talk to me about speedrunning, one thing leads to another, and uh, you know, I've been speedrunning it for several years now, so that this, this could be you uh, next year or within a few years. So if you're interested in Super Metroid, we would really love to have as many people as possible uh, come hang out with us. Also, there's plenty of people that do other things that really help the community, like our moderators and other things like that, community uh, tournament organizers. Also, everyone that writes support software, like our practice hacks. Sure, right. The people that, that helped on the practice hacks probably deserve like all the world records in this game. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's very true. And just to make my point or to bring it home, uh, we've had a lot of fun with the Super Metroid people that have shown up to this event here. Will you guys make some noise out there? That's right. I'm skipping Main Street. Okay. So what Zenny just pointed out is there is an item in this room uh, that you can short charge to Sean Spark to get. He has decided to skip it, which that has let that has cued Zost into that he will need to pick it up when he shows up into this uh, room near the end of the run. So depending on how a run is going, there actually is like there are a few items that they can have some leeway on and decide who's going to pick up uh, in any particular setting. So in this one, Zenny skipped one, and Zost will get it here in a little while. Also, I think now would be a good time. I'm gonna let you take this one, Chavo. Zost is coming up on some really fun, like cool mm. looking, but also very difficult strats here uh, back in uh, Criteria. We're on the landing site where you come in on the ship, but tell us a little bit about short charging. Yeah, well, first he's setting up a wraparound shot and it actually works because out of bounds, there are other copies of the room just because of how it's laid out in memory. So he was able to fire towards the right side of the room and have the shot hit the door on the left side. So now he's setting up a short charge. It's a very particular short charge. You have to have it activate just so. <laughs> so close. <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't lay the power bomb, but uh, he got the short charge just right so that he could break those blocks without falling into that pit. And you can shine spark to the back of this room, and it looks amazing. Yes, it's very, but, very tight. Yeah, I got but, the hard part. <laughs> <laughs> but this strat is still really cool, and uh, now he's going to go through these two sets of crumble blocks. I know just... <laughs> oh! Nice. I, I, I joked that I was going to do that on purpose, right. but I did not do that on purpose. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if the crowd understands what just happened, but trust me, that was worth some applause. <laughs> That was a, uh, he, he avoided a potentially uh, <laughs> multi minute mis uh, multi minute mistake there. So great job, Zos. Yes. But uh, Zo Chaba, help me out with the explanation. Short charging, basically to get the echoes and then potentially a shine spark. The game checks on certain frames of the run animation to eventually get there. And if you press the dash button at the correct times, you can sort of get those in a much shorter physical space. Yeah, so you have to get your dash counter to four, and it increases if you're holding dash when Samus's run animation is on a certain frame. So if you hold it for only those frames, then you can increase your dash counter without increasing your momentum, which allows you to charge your shine spark in a shorter time, right. or a shorter distance, rather. And one of the greatest things about any hundo run is you get a second chance to hear the great green Brinstar music. Mm. Super Metroid has uh, t tons of excellent music in it, but this is one of the, the best tracks in the game for me. Okay, not a second time. 
Well, that's true. I meant for the crumbled block. Right. <laughs> uh, everybody again. We saw lots of practice runs, uh, so things are going well so far. <laughs> All right, Zinni over here is going to be heading into Batwoon. Safe to say everybody's favorite boss in the game. Yeah, and another new strat. So uh, runner Detal came up with this. That's right. Uh, that allows us to shoot missiles earlier in the cycle, and it makes a one round much easier. Very nicely done, Zinni. Thank you. Also, let's watch Zinni for a minute. This is a probably one of the most classic Super Metroid speedrunning tricks, the full halfy. Mm. It's going to be a little tight here. Nope. Oh, that's okay. Full halfy is very flashy, but you know, not the biggest deal. No, in terms of time, it, it, it's not a, it, it's not going to be detrimental to the run at all. And uh, let's let's tell a little Super Metroid lore just to you know give everybody a sneak peek into how things get named. There's usually a name mm. for every room or every item in the game. Uh, yeah. Zenny just picked up the the missiles in the precious room, mm -hmm. which I think every time someone hears that, the first thing they think about is some connection to Lord of the Rings. Where did that actually come from, Chaba? So there was there was a runner who was talking about you know. The, the room before Dragon, they called it the Precious Room, but that was actually a typo. He meant to say previous. That's right. But that named the room. So that's what it is now. And it's been the Precious Room ever since. Yep. Zinni gonna fight Dragon here. This is a really cool opening strat. Using an X Factor and a Shine Spark to get maximum damage on the opening. And he's gonna attempt to get a... Oh, excellently done. I didn't even have time to explain it. <laughs> That's about as perfect as you can get for Dragon. Nicely done. And a spike suit. Excellent job. That's going to allow him to do the reverse. The reverse happy. Mm -hmm. And everybody's favorite item, the space jump. Yeah. And I will also say that uh, that setup for the X Factor is new. Uh, it's right. somewhat similar to Behemoth's setup, which is the rain dance, but it's modified, and this one creates less lag. Really kind of goes to show you how awesome Super Metroid is as a speedrun uh, game because you can spend tons of time, put a lot of effort into it, and yet still there are new strats being found all the time. And we have the full Wompy. <laughs> That's right. Womp will jump into the spark. Can't remember who named that one. I have no idea where Womp will jump came from, but... Yeah, or, or who made the full Wompy after that. <laughs> right. Zinni went ahead and turned off his various suit right there on a pause. Uh, one interesting sort of neat thing about co-op is sometimes you get the chance to use items um, like that you would never actually have uh, in that part of the run. So right now, Zos technically does have the space jump already equipped in Green Brin Star. You would typically not see that. This right here is going to be like a um, map completion strat, <laughs> this particular space jump. Then he got the Hollywood video, uh, old strat with a new name, because it's similar to Blockbuster. It usually comes after the Blockbuster in 100%. Uh. Zo's going to lay a power bomb right here. It might look like, why is he laying that there? But there's a purpose. There's an orange door up there. And uh, he went ahead and opened it early, which will allow both players then to avoid having to do that again later in the run. Yeah, it'll save Zinni some time when he comes back to this area. Good example of uh, teamwork here with Super Metroid Co-op. Also, uh, we should mention that you guys are watching a really awesome... Well, let's look at the blockbuster real quick. Oh, very yeah. nicely done. Yep, so it's got the blockbuster, otherwise you have to go around that ledge. That's right. And then a nice ice clip into... Uh, the Shack Tool room here to get Spring Ball for Zinni. And Zinni kind of gets to chill for just a minute and wait for yeah. Shack Tool to get done. But he damaged himself on Shack Tool, and that's a fairly new strat. So it reduces the lag from the power bomb. That's right. Because when Samus takes damage, then her sprite is only drawn every other frame, as long as she has iframes. So Zost heading down now is going to pick up some items in Upper North Fair, but then also uh, go to take care of Lower North Fair. What I was going to say earlier was, you know, you guys are watching two-player co-op, but the cool thing about uh, Multitroid and how co-op works is you can actually do more than two players as well. 
There's even some leaderboards for three-player co-op, uh, different categories. So however many friends the, you want to bring with you, you're, you're welcome to do that. One of the commonly missed missiles that Zos is grabbing right now. And I love that damage boost. Also, hopefully we'll get to see this. This is good timing. Zenny just picked up that spring ball, which gives, it, it affords Zos the opportunity to potentially do a spring ball strat in this room. Very nice. He's keeping as much speed as possible to space jump through. Yeah, it's important you get as much speed as you can there because this space jump is really long, so you're stuck with that speed. And if you fall in that room, it's terrible oh. because uh, lava kills speed boosters' speed for some reason. So if you fall on those spikes, then you have to move slowly through the rest of the room. Right. You'll also have to forgive me and Chavo if we don't comment on a particular strat that you really <laughs> love out there because with Super Metroid, there's a cool strat in almost every room and with two people playing at the same time, it's hard to keep up with everything. Yep. Zost had a really nice de-boost uh, into uh, the lava dive room and then space mm. jumped up. Zost has a strat coming up in this room that he came up with and... Oh, this is Behemoths, actually. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah, this, this yeah. version is Behemoths. Okay. So it's, it's actually about the same speed as the old version if you get it right, but it has some backups that are faster than the backups for the old strat, which I'm a big fan of that. Oh, that was an excellent strat there mm. by Zenny as well on the left side with getting a plasma beam. Plasma Beam came at a perfect time. It's really cool how this run ends up lining up with a lot of the item pickups. Uh, Zenny grabbing that Plasma Beam is now going to help Zost out in the next room here fight Golden Terizo. Golden Terizo is extremely slow. Well, I won't say extremely slow. I could use all supers, but I'd waste all our supers <laughs> to try to beat Golden Terizo, or it'd be very slow. Also, take a look at Zenny's screen for just a moment. This room has some pretty cool tech in it as well. Very nice. Good mm. job, Zenny. Zost getting some double hits on GT over here. Can I get in with a couple donations? Absolutely. Mm. Awesome. I've got a $50 donation here from Vatic. I always have to donate during Super Metroid on behalf of my two cats, Samus and Ridley. <laughs> Save the animals. Nice. I've also got $250 from Shoji Koto. Kill the animals! <laughs> and it looks like right now Save is ahead by about uh, 1400 so keep those donations coming in if you want to get that changed up. So sparking through the pillar room. Always hey. cool to see. Even with uh, screw attack, space jumping at almost full speed, it's just faster to shine spark there. Mm. But I think the main reason is lag, actually, and not that, if it, that it's the, that much faster movement-wise, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it lags lag pretty hard if you space jump through there, because I tend to do that. <laughs> lag is a reason we do a lot of things, actually. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, now that you mention that, yeah, uh, the next room that Zost will be in, he's actually going to lay a power mm. bomb, and it's going to seem like it's, you know, like what is it doing? Like in an accident. <laughs> right, it's going to look like an accident, but it's definitely uh, purposeful. Oh. It, it has something to do with uh, the sound cue. Y'all could probably explain it better than me. Yeah, as, as you enter a door, the game has to wait for all the sounds to finish before it can start the door transition. But if you lay a power bomb, it empties all the sound, so it can keep going immediately. And also killing all those key hunters for the power bomb lag in this room. Uh, otherwise, it's multiple seconds if you keep all of them alive. Right. So now that Zenny is done with his portion of Meridia, while Zost is uh, clearing up Lower Norfair and heading to Ridley, we're going to have Zenny head back up and go back into the retro Brinstar area. Well, actually, before that, he'll pick up the X-ray scope here. But he'll be heading up to Retro Bryn to collect a few more uh, items before he ends up going to Torian. So Zenny will be our runner who will be handling the Metroid rooms and baby Metroid and all that. Let's watch Zos. Hopefully, he'll, he'll be able to get this strat here. 
Oh, very mm. nice. And now it, 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 the third room really completes the whole thing. Yep. Excellent. And also Zenny landing on the spike so that he can uh, run faster through the second half of that room. That's right. And uh, shout outs to whoever donated earlier for naming their cat Ridley. <laughs> uh, my dog is named Sam after Samus, so I can appreciate that. But this is uh, one of the best boss fights in the game. Ridley is always very interesting in every category, whether it, you are you know, super equipped for it or not. Here, it won't take too long to kill Ridley. It's either 20 charge shots with the full beam combination, but ah. those supers actually do double damage. So oftentimes those will supplement some of that in there too. Very nicely done. Yeah, I split the difference in the middle, kind of 12 charge shots, sort of in the middle, 12 charge shots, 12 supers usually. Works out. At least in this run. On Zinni's side, this section of the run is actually very technically demanding. Uh, there's some really cool strats going on over here. This is one of the hardest sections in the game. <laughs> For sure. So it's firing a missile because it lags less than the beam. Back to the lag thing. Yep. Love that super missile that Zenny just did. So it's K going up through uh, those platforms there and getting a speed ball through Wasteland. Mm -hmm. And clipping through that platform too. That's right. What room are we entering on Zenny's side, Chaba? Uh, the Billy Mays room, because there's one missile patch. Right. But wait, there's more. Oh, is that right? If I order now, what do I get? Another missile patch. Oh, excellent. <laughs> yeah. All right, check out Zo's side real quick. There's a series of really cool D boosts here. Mm. Not sure if I'll be able to get the. Oh. <laughs> oh, wow. <well. laughs> All right, there, there, was a, there was a series of one cool D boost there. <laughs> uh, t t explain the Hoda Ruby special. Yeah, please. yeah. So the, in this next room, Zost is going to be doing a uh, strat to. Do a short charge into a spring ball jump, and it's going to break a bomb block after you. Whoa. Before you, he grabs you try the to get right. the missile on the way to the bomb block, but you still got the bomb block with it. Yeah, and uh, Hudaribi published his 100% PB back in, I think it was 2008. And then he published that strat afterwards. So for a while, a lot of people actually, there was like misconception that, he, that it was misnamed, they didn't create the strat but then we rediscovered the video. On Zenny's side, we're gonna get a really long vertical shine spark there to get the climb supers. And Zenny's gonna grab one more item before he makes his way into Torian. And uh, the good news is all four of the major bosses have already been defeated. So he'll just have to kind of chill for a minute until that cutscene finishes. In the meantime, Zos will finish with Lower Norfair, and then he's got some cool strats to show you in Upper Norfair for the remaining items that were not picked up earlier in the run. Technically, those were called the 230 missiles because they're the like 230th missiles or whatever that you get at the end of a hundred run a hundo run, but I guess we can't really call them the 230 missiles in this <laughs> run because there's more missiles to pick up. Yeah, but they ain't got a fantastic mark ball coming out of that room. That's logic is not going to stop us. <laughs> <laughs> One of my personal favorite strats of this run and also the hundo runs in general is coming up soon on Zo's side when he re-enters Bubble Mountain. Uh, he's he's going to have the opportunity to use Spring Ball to get a really neat across the room D boost. So uh, let's see how it goes on his side. It looks really awesome uh, when it's when it's executed, and it's it's pretty difficult to do. So let's see what Zos does here. Gets through the door properly. I love this bomb. Hmm. Bomb to kill the waver up top again to reduce lag. Oh, I can't get the D boost back, but that's fine. <laughs> nice, nicely done. Mm. 
Yeah, I think the waiver stops moving when you go off screen. So the bomb is pretty easy to place and not miss because of that. So we are getting closer and closer to the end of the run. Uh, I would like to make my personal pitch for everybody to save the frames and kill the animals. And uh, I guess I, I, I guess I should atone real quick. Um, one of the first GDQs I ever watched, I actually <laughs> didn't know what they were talking about when they said save and kill the animals. And I decided to donate, and I do donated to save the animals because I was like, I can't donate to kill the animals. Well, once I started uh, speedrunning Super Metroid, I understood. So I'd like to formally apologize to speedrunners everywhere for doing that. <laughs> Zos, Chavo, why don't you guys explain what's happening here with, with, with Rob? <laughs> Yeah, so if you use plasma on Croc, that hits him many, many times as it's going through his body. So it does a lot of damage, causes him to move all the way back to the collapsing bridge. But Zost is off camera because it warped him to the left. That's right. And then there's an invisible wall here <laughs> that normally prevents you from moving left. Now it's preventing us from moving right. So very briefly, uh, we're coming up on the, the baby skip. There are many iterations of the baby skip, and new ones continue to get uh, discovered. So we're going to give uh, Zinni a chance to focus here, uh, and then afterwards we'll try to explain what you see. But he's going to do it in a different way than I think has been done in past GDQs. Let's see how it goes. Oh, so close. Not a big deal, though. So th can you explain the, the difference between the one he just attempted and the old one? Yeah. Well, I'll just say real quick that because he got grabbed going through the door, the game basically thinks that he's still being grabbed by the baby, which slows his movement. So he can fix that by saving and then resetting. Uh, but yeah, so this iteration of the baby skip, uh, so most of the time, you know, dating back 10 years, we've been going, have them, having the baby go around counterclockwise relative to Samus. And there's a runner, Stachio Cat, who on a whim was like, can we make it go clockwise? And he got the baby skip by having it go clockwise, and he was like, uh, this might actually be faster. Right. And then Zenny, Zost, Real Cutie, and a few other runners played around with it, and yeah, it's faster than what was previously optimal for any percent. That's right. I wish you guys would quit finding strats that I have to learn. <laughs> It'd be nice for me to just, you know, stick with something I already know. All right, so we got Mother Brain 1 here. <laughs> I forgot I still had that. <laughs> I don't really need it. Normal 100% you're carrying, carrying spikes here through all this, so... so. Had one sort of by habit. <laughs> so what we'll say in advance real quick is now would be a good time to pay close attention to their resources, so their energy and their ammunition, because there's a lot of interplay between what each one is doing. Uh, Mother Brain is going to shoot the rainbow beam. It's going to do uh, six E-tanks worth of damage because Zenny turned his various suit off earlier in the run. Uh, he's going to try to set up to do a stand-up. But Zost actually needs some energy to do some of his strats, and they also need um, like a super and power bomb for some things that are coming up. Uh, so watch I'll how they kind of work together. So I'm I'm gonna pause here because uh, the rainbow pause. beam actually uh, depletes our ammo, and Zost needed a super missile to get through his gate there. So I probably should have waited earlier. Probably need the safe kill total pretty soon as well. Yeah. All right, where it's in right now, I'm showing save ahead by about 1700. Should we close it at the end of MP3 or? Oh, uh, that should be fine. I would. Oh, I forgot. Zeus going for a shine spark, but. Not having enough energy there, uh, but he's going to dip into the reserves here. This was the missile that Zenny pointed out earlier that he was going to skip. So 
So then there's the second to last item that we have remaining. So this is going to grab one more once it gets into Red Brinstar. Zost will need a super to get through this green gate in the next room. Two of them to get to the door as well, yeah. Mm. That's right. And if well, I could get a cack attack drop too. Correct. And if he needed a power bomb drop, he could get one from uh, the zeros in the bottom of the room, but he's already got that power bomb there, so he'll be in good shape. So here's the last item being picked up for this any percent all items run. Sorry, I couldn't quite hear. We saving? Saving the animals? Killing? Saving? They said we are, the head. we are saving the animals with with nineteen thousand four hundred and ninety eight dollars. We are saving the animals. All right. So the interesting thing about co-op when it comes to saving the animals is uh, the saving of the animals is actually going to happen uh, at a, in a different sequence than it normally would. I believe Zost is that correct? You're going to be the one saving. So as Zinni attempts to just escape. Zos will actually head over to save the animals, and they will probably be back in parlor uh, at roughly similar times. Mm. Yeah. So uh, unless they were going to meet at the ship at the ship at almost exactly uh, the same time, then saving the animals doesn't actually cost any time in this category. That's right. And uh, we will be coming up on time. There's the animals. <laughs> I lost my giant spark because of that. <laughs> time is when the second player uh, is facing forward on the ship, and it looks like that's going to be Zost. And time. Excellent run, guys. Nicely done. I am. Um... And I do want to quickly say, I didn't say this earlier and I should have. Really, guys, give an extra round of applause for Zost and Zinni here. These are two of our premier runners. They put in a lot of work. They're awesome dudes. And we uh, really appreciate you guys a lot. Thank you both Thank for you. commentating our run, too. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you for inviting us. Mm -hmm. Thanks for having us as well. It's an honor to close out the event. I've never been able to, I've never actually closed out the event. I've done a lot of next to last, so it's really awesome. Thank you guys so much. Uh, this has been a, a great opportunity. Um, I've wanted to showcase this for, for years and years. Um, it's been it's been really an honor to uh, come back and do this in person. So, yeah, thank you, Zost, for uh, for submitting with me, and it's been a pleasure. Yeah, thank you, Kip and Chavo, for the wonderful commentary. Thank and you. Thank you, crowd. Thank Thanks to the community too for all the support. We we couldn't we wouldn't be the runners we would be without the community. I don't think yeah, and each right. other, of course. Mm. I guess we're waiting for Deer Force. Yeah, or, uh... I was going to ask. There's going to be two of them. So are we gonna... <laughs> That's uh, true. So we either need to line up on one together or do it twice. What do you guys think? We'll do it twice. We're going to do it twice. 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 <laughs> All right. I catch up on some donations while we're waiting here. Yeah, go for it. Yeah. Uh, we had a lot coming through here. A hundred dollars in from the hockey towner. Good luck, Zenny and Zost. You are two of the finest, fastest, most superlative speedrunners to ever play the game. <laughs> Shout outs to the Super Metroid speedrunning community, one of the best there is. This one goes to kill the animals. Thank you, hockey. Thank you. One of our one of our great commentators. That's right. 
$150 came in from Sassy Zenny. I'm guessing it's too late to request co-op reverse boss order getting a category a bit more. Oh well, kill the animals. Also, can we get a thank you from the crowd in chat to the amazing Games Done Quick staff and volunteers? Say thank you with me on three. One, two, three. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. All right, so we're about to get our first of two deer forces on the left. Deer Force! And again on the right. It's like the Billy Mays room. Yeah. <laughs> but wait, there's more. Deer, Deer Force! Force! Hope you all enjoyed the run. We got 100%. Many percent. <laughs> many percent. That is many. Thank you, Zenny and Zos, for that amazing run. As we're getting things wrapped up here, I still want to try and get a couple more donations in. We had one sneak in there at the last minute for $23,411.42 from the Yeti. Hey, all. Yeti here. Big love from the Yeti and everyone still up watching SGDQ. The Yeti's collection is still available and will be available until Sunday at midnight CST. Make sure you grab your official SGDQ items before then. Proceeds of all orders will be donated directly to MSF. I also had $50 in from Rystar 2. Shout out to the Chozo statue with the screaming chef inside. There was a $200 donation from Zombie Greedo. SGDQ has put on such an amazing show all week. Though I'm sad it's finally coming to an end, I can't wait to catch up on all the fantastic runs I've missed over on YouTube. And what better way to wrap it up than with some Super Metroid? Let's go Zenny and Zost. And don't bother those pesky animals. They can probably get out on their own, right? And a $500 donation in from Bidol to old friends met again and new friends made in this place. It was a joy to experience this week with you. I got everything I could have wanted. Safe journey home and may we see each other again ere long. All right. That'll do it up here for me. From the host desk, I have been Mr. Game and Shout. Mike, thank you, everybody. Mike, looks like you're ready for us up on the main stage. And with that, Summer Games Done Quick 2023 comes to an end. I know, sad, but honestly, let's give it up for our runners once again. Shiny Zenny and Zos for that amazing Super Metroid 100 per Oh, sorry, not 100%, any percent all items co-op run. I have to respect Zost. <laughs>
And uh, yeah, I mean, there's so much to say and so little time, but really, um, we're so grateful for everything that you donated. We're aware that, you know, the donation total has been a little lower than previous events, but honestly, um, we're aware that, you know, inflation has been a real thing, you know, we have to save money while wallets have been tight, and we're honestly grateful for anything that, you know, you can donate is much appreciated. Honestly, even if you can't afford to donate, even just watching our event is much appreciated. You know, just getting the eyes out there, a little bit of promotion just really helps us so much. And um, honestly, like, it's we're super grateful for it because we're aware that a lot of people are like, really? SGDQ is on right now? Yes, it is. And thank you for, for watching and Really, and because you were all watching, we still raised a lot of money for Doctors Without Borders. Yeah. As of right now, we're at two million two hundred thirty-nine thousand dollar two hundred thirty-nine and uh, two two million two hundred thirty-nine thousand two hundred four dollars. And uh, for Doctors Without Borders, thank you so much, everyone, and. With that, um, a little word from Bernard Wiseman from Doctors Without Borders. All right, thank you for so so much, Mike. Um, just uh, what an incredible outcome, everybody. Um, just on behalf of MSF, I want to say a huge thank you. It's been so much fun to hang out with everybody this week here in Minneapolis, but also online. Um, $2.2 million, it's absolutely incredible, and we're kind of over the roof and uh, just really, really blown away by all the, the commitment and, of the community. I think from the beginning, SGDQ has raised over $21 million for charity. Uh, just incredible. Um, it, it, it really just shows the power and the engagement of the community. Um, just uh, from a, a quick thank you to the GDQ team, uh, you know, the runners, the mods, the interviewers, the hosts, uh, the, all of the volunteers who worked over the past week. Uh, it's just incredible. I just want to give a real quick shout out to the Twitch chat. Um, uh, just for, for giving me my first gamer name, I, I am now referred to as Chef Bernardi. So uh, th thank you very much. And uh, really, everybody, um, you know, we feel so lucky to be part of this event and to be part of this community. So thank you very much. And uh, for, for everyone who donated and for everyone who watched. So thank you very much, Mike. Thank you so much, Bernard. Or should I say, yes, chef. <laughs> Yeah, so um, one of my aims for this event that uh, was to kind of make this event uh, on site more lively than SGDQ uh, 2022. You know, it was great being on site again for the first time in a while uh, last year, but, you know, we didn't have too many on site activities or site events and the like. And from what I saw throughout the event, you know, people were so happy to be back, you know, have the board game room, the arcade, uh, tournament room, shout outs to Evil Zone and Street Fighter VI. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, panels room, and you know, all, you know, all the people I talked to seemed to have a really good time, so I'm really grateful for that because a lot of hard work was put in the event, but it wasn't just my hard work that was put into this event. You know, without our staff right over here and partners, um, you know, that includes everyone from check-in, safety, producers, interview producers, tech leads, and so much more. Set up, tear down. I'm sure I'm forgetting a bunch of you. There's so many of you. And honestly, um, you know, this would also not be possible without our hundreds of volunteers. Yeah. Big shout out to them. This event would not run without our volunteers. And honestly, you know, we gave a shout out to our Twitch chat audience and they 100% deserve it. But the people who also deserve it are the attendees and the people who have been watching the runs all throughout the week. Without you all, we wouldn't have the awesome energy that we have in the room. I mean, it's what? Six o'clock right now and there's still so many of you in the room? 
I mean, this is some true gamer o'clock hours, right, everyone? <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, it just felt like so while SGDQ was our 2022 was our first uh, marathon on site again, this one felt like it was GDQ kind of returning back to like a real like live on like on-site GDQ with like how lively it was. And um, I'm just super grateful for that. Um, speaking of being grateful, uh, you know, we have all of our sponsors, not just the one who donated to Doctors Without Borders directly, but who also donated equipment for this event, uh, you know, supporting uh, GDQ too. So uh, here is the, and the, so I would like to thank the Yeti, Fan Gamer, Red Bull, gives you wings. Uh, Devolver Digital and Gumbre Gumbrella. Uh, Annapurna Interactive. Tiny Thor, The Behemoth. Jackbox Games. Lenovo. Intel. Double Dragon Gaiden, Rise of the Dragons. Limited Run Games. Hell of an Office by 43 Studios. Asus and Asus Republic of Gamers, Psychic Drive, who was one half of our awesome arcade, by the way, the other half being Event Arcade Rentals, uh, DX Racer USA, and uh, the great prizes by uh, Audio Technica, and of course, last but not least, Twitch. Now, uh, I do have some final words to say, but, you know, we have our illustrious prize man here, and if he has any words to say or if there's anything I forgot, you know, I'll give him the floor. Thank you so much, Mike. Uh, real quick, I do also want to thank everyone who submitted or provided a prize for the event. You are all awesome. I, yeah, thank, please, please. I also wanted to give a special shout out to the 20 or so tech, photography, and videography staff who are still behind our cameras right now, making sure that this finale is possible. But please give them a special round of applause. Um, and one last thank you, Mike, of course, to you for your wisdom and guidance for the past 13 years of GDQ. Thank you so much. Yes, as you all know, I am very quite retired right now. <laughs> And, uh, but speaking of retirement, um, our prolific uh, host coordinator, Prolix, this is his last event. Uh, would you like to come on stage, Prolix, or are you feeling a little bashful? Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, Prolix has been our host coordinator for, I want to say, at least five years at this point. Um, and he's done a lot of good work for us. You know, he's made a really great uh, host community that they like to call it themselves the host fam. Um, and you know, and I mean, the hosts are what really like kind of complete the experience for GDQ. They bring the energy and, you know, like just help us out so much. So uh, do you have any final words you want to say, Prolix? Oh, goodness. Uh, I, I wasn't expecting this. Um, uh, well, thank you all very much uh, for, for listening to us. And I, uh, anything uh, that, uh, any problem you ever had with the, with the host, that's not my fault. Anything great that they ever did, that was all me. Uh, beyond that, <laughs> uh, it's, it's been a fantastic time here. I uh, wouldn't trade it for the world, uh, you know, and uh, I, yeah, I really, really appreciate uh, the, the journey and, and working on all these events. It's, it's so incredible to go back to uh, the, you know, the rest of your life and say, yeah, last week I raised millions of dollars for charity. I had like a big part of that. It's, it's, it's incredible and not many people can say that. And so I treasure the time here for sure. It's just a, it's just a good time for me to move on. And, but uh, yeah, thank you all so much for all the compliments I've seen in Twitch chat and whatnot over the years. Much appreciated. Thank you so much, Prolix, for Thank you so much, Prolix, for all your hard work and efforts. They have not gone in vain. And take your well-deserved break. 
And uh, Prolix is not the only uh, person I'd like to shout out. I'd also like to give a big shout out uh, to Worm. Knowing Worm, he'd probably rather not come on stage, but <laughs> if he does, that's, <laughs> that's totally cool. But uh, Worm has just provided so much uh, logistics, you know, he's just been invaluable with the logistics, the tech, and just everything to do with the event, you know. People, you know, people and staff have said, I've really stepped it up, but honestly, Worm has stepped it up at least as much as me, if not more so. So he gives, he deserves a big round of applause. And uh, there is one final person I'd like to give a shout out to. Um, you might have noticed he has not been here this event. That would be Cool Matty. Uh, he has been in the hospital uh, for a while. So please, you know, uh, get, uh, get better, Matt. You know, please take it easy. Um, I know it's hard for you not being able to come to this event and, you know, just watching from the sidelines. But, you know, you helped make this event possible when I was too sick. Um, to help organize it, and hopefully I have taken on the reins successfully and, uh, you know, covered for you when, when you need it the most. And I feel, at the very least, that staff has stepped up um, when, when we've uh, needed it the most. And with that, um, you know, that Summer Games Done Quick uh, 2023. I'm sorry, but we have to say goodbye eventually, and I think that time is now. So, goodbye, everyone! Love you, Matt! Actually, last summer was my very first time coming to a Games Done Quick in person. My first marathon I ever did was Fleet Fatales back in 2020. That really sparked my love for speedrunning marathons. I used to work in the charity space, and on top of that, I've loved games since I was a kid. Being able to be in a world that really unifies those things and is so inclusive, just it made me want to keep coming back for more. GDQ changes every year. There are wild changes all the time. I mean, we've ballooned and, and, and grown so much every single event. It's just also exciting. And the number of projects that GDQ gets to do, I mean, the advent of Hotfix in the last few years, just all these cool things that GDQ now gets to do and the things that the organization has grown to become. In a lot of ways, I feel like I've grown up alongside the event. Not only are people incredibly inclusive, regardless of your gender identity, regardless of your age, but there are people constantly looking to introduce others to the speed funds they love, to the games they enjoy. This is like our Super Bowl. I get to see a lot of my friends that I rarely get to see. For the speedrunning community, this is the time when we all get together and talk about the thing we love. It's not just about watching the speedruns, it's about really immersing yourself in that community and people constantly uplifting and supporting each other. It is a Herculean and in some ways, to use another Greek analogy, Sisyphean effort uh, every year. I think people understand that it's hard, but I don't think people have the slightest idea just how much work goes into these events. All these little groups are like handling a massive chunk of what makes GDQ happen. And if any one of these puzzle pieces weren't there, it wouldn't be the event that we know. It's a community effort. The technical side, the entertainment side, the gaming side, unifying that all is one. That's what we're all here for, is our mutual love of gaming and sharing this passion with others.
I never thought that this was the trajectory my life was going to take because for a long time I didn't know speedrunning exists, but now that I'm here, I'm not looking back. <laughs>